What's good everybody? As so many of you all have requested, today's video is about stretch marks and the stretch mark removal process. But before we get to the science, the causes and the treatment, let's talk about one very important point. A lot of people let stretch marks affect their confidence levels or their emotional state of mind. This is an issue that most human beings deal with. It's nothing for you to feel embarrassed about. It's a very normal issue. So instead of letting it affect your state of mind, your job right now is to just educate yourself about it and educate yourself about the science behind preventing stretch marks in the long term. So how are we going to do that? We're going to science the shit out of it. So stretch marks are basically damage marks or lesions on your body. They appear in places that have slightly higher fat percentages. So that's your chest area, your abdomen area, your thighs, your buttocks. They start off with a red or purple color and then transition into a white color. Now while it's in its red or purple form, stretch marks are treatable. But that doesn't mean that once they turn white, they can't be treated. In today's video, we're going to cover all the kinds of possibilities when it comes to stretch marks. But firstly, you've got to understand the science behind stretch marks. Keep in mind, every single human being is prone to getting stretch marks. And that's why from a prevention perspective, it's very important for you to know the detailed science about stretch marks. So let's get straight into it. So firstly, you've got to understand the structure of the skin. It's got three primary layers. The epidermis, the dermis and the hypodermis. The epidermis is the outer layer of your skin. Its main job is protection from the external world. The innermost layer, the hypodermis, is responsible for insulation because it also contains the fat layer. But the dermis, the middle layer, is where this problem of stretch marks arises. Now the main function of the dermis is giving structure to your skin. And by structure, we're talking about two important factors. Pliability and elasticity. Pliability is the ability of your skin to stretch and elasticity is the ability of your skin to retain its original shape. So if I pull my skin up, when it goes back down, pliability and elasticity are coming into play. And it's coming into play through the dermis. This is the main function of the dermis. Stretch marks occur in the dermis. Now why do stretch marks happen in the first place? To answer that question, you've got to understand the term fibroblast. It's a type of cell in the body and it's an origin cell for the connective tissue in the body. Primarily, we're talking about the connective tissues collagen and elastin fibers. Collagen and elastin fibers help in giving the structure, the elasticity, the pliability to your skin. But they originate from fibroblasts. So you can think of fibroblasts as some kind of currency for connective tissue. Say, suppose you have 100 rupees and you can buy 200 chewing gums with those 100 rupees. Similarly, if you have 100 fibroblasts, they'll give rise to 200 units of collagen or 200 units of elastin fibers. Now, stretch marks affect some people more than they affect other people. And that's primarily because those people have a lesser degree of collagen and elastin fibers. And that also means that they have a lesser degree of fibroblasts in their body. So the real reason stretch marks happen are because your body is producing fewer fibroblasts. Fewer fibroblasts means more stretch marks. But what causes these fewer fibroblasts? There's two primary reasons. Firstly, some people are genetically prone to having fewer fibroblasts than normal. And that means they're also prone to having more stretch marks. But the second, more common reason is stress. When you're stressed, be it mental stress or even something like physical stress through over-exercising, your body produces more of a hormone called cortisone, which is the stress hormone. It's produced by your adrenaline gland when you're in a fight or flight situation. So when a dog's chasing you, that's a fight or flight situation. Your body's gonna react to that external situation by increasing its level of cortisone. But that also applies to situations where you're stressed with work or your studies or your life. Your body elevates its own cortisone levels. And even if you're over-exercising, if you're putting your body through too much exercise, more than you should be putting it through, that's when your cortisone levels get elevated. A higher degree of cortisone affects the formation of fibroblasts. And lesser fibroblasts mean lesser collagen and elastin fibers, which mean more stretch marks. Why do stretch marks happen? Because you're stretching your skin, and because there's lesser collagen and elastin fibers, when you stretch the skin, it ends up getting damaged instead of coming back into place. So those are the two primary reasons you get stretch marks. But what causes the stretching in the first place? This is where the causes of stretch marks comes into play. Firstly, we're talking about a rapid weight change. 
That's a rapid gain in weight or rapid loss in weight. Usually when you gain weight very fast, your skin gets stretched more than expected and then it can't retain its original shape. In the process, the dermis gets damaged and that gives rise to a stretch mark. If you're someone who's overweight and you try losing weight extremely rapidly, once again, that rapid weight loss elevates your cortisone levels. It makes your skin more prone to stretch marks and your skin can't keep up with your rapid weight change again. That's what causes stretch marks. But there are other immediate reasons. We're talking about pregnancy, obviously, where your stomach kind of becomes much bigger than it's used to being. And cortisone levels are elevated during pregnancy, so it gives rise to stretch marks in pregnant women. But we're also talking about adolescence, your teenage, especially in young girls, but also in a lot of guys who are going through a growth spurt. Their muscles and their bones grow very big and their skin can't keep up with that growth of muscle and bone. That's how you end up getting stretch marks in your teenage. There are also medical conditions where you get stretch marks. These are the medical conditions that make you more prone to stretch marks, but there are also medicines that can make you more prone to stretch marks. Primarily corticosteroid creams or even oral steroids or systemic steroids, that's injectable steroids. So stretch marks are an extremely common issue and I will get to talking about the treatment when it comes to stretch marks. But it's very important for you to know how to prevent them in the long term. If you're someone who suffers from stretch marks, that means your body's prone to getting them. And that's where these rules come into play. What can you change in your lifestyle in order to prevent stretch marks in the long term? It's primarily diet. Firstly, you gotta keep yourself hydrated most of the time. When you're hydrated, your body produces more collagen than normal and that helps prevent stretch marks in the long term. Secondly, we're talking about nutrition. Primarily vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E and zinc rich foods. I'm not going to talk about the foods in detail because that's a whole different video. The next key point is that you need to have a protein rich diet. And that's a huge issue in India because our Indian meals, our standard Indian meals don't provide enough protein. If you want to know more about how to calculate your own protein requirement, make sure you check out the video we made on that exact topic. And the final protocol, if you want to prevent stretch marks in the long term, is a healthy way of gaining weight and losing weight. A healthy rate of weight gain is about 0.2 or 0.3 kgs per week. And I've made once again a video on how to gain weight in a healthy manner. And while we're talking about weight loss, even if you're morbidly obese, you shouldn't be losing more than 0.5 kgs a week. Anything more than that is too rapid and it elevates your cortisone levels. So keep that in mind. But let's get to actually talking about the treatment. What can you do once you've got the stretch marks? Keep in mind there's two situations. Firstly, if they're raw, if they're red or purple, that's when stretch marks are much more treatable. They remain raw for six months to 12 months. After that, they become white and they become scarred and that's when it becomes a little harder to treat them and the treatments get more expensive. So firstly, let's talk about the natural treatments. There's lavender oil, there's almond oil, there's lemon water, there's aloe vera gel, which works very well in most cases. But if these don't work for you, that's when you want to go for a medical treatment. And keep in mind, I am not a dermatologist. So you shouldn't go for this treatment unless you've consulted with a dermatologist. We're talking about tretinoin cream. So after consulting with a dermat, you can go for a tretinoin cream. It's an extremely powerful ointment that can even damage your body. So you've got to be very careful while you're using it. But tretinoin creams have been shown to completely cure stretch marks while they're still raw. That's red or purple. The cream encourages that region of your skin to produce new skin cells and get rid of old skin cells just like the next treatment, regular massages. Now, while your stretch marks are still raw, if you massage the region that's suffering from the stretch marks, it promotes the formation of collagen. And collagen in the long term, in that particular region, will prevent stretch marks from happening. Now, these are all the natural remedies and all the exterior remedies. But if your stretch marks have become completely white or scarred, that's where the next remedies come into play. We're talking about pulse dye treatment, laser surgeries and cosmetic surgeries. All three are extremely expensive. You need to consult with a doctor before going for all three. And I feel you should only do them if it's your last resort and if you can afford it. I'm not a fan of going for these treatments because what I honestly feel is that stretch marks are something that happens to every single human being. A lot of people look at their own stretch marks and get embarrassed about it. They think that, okay, what will people think of me? Firstly, you've got to keep in mind that stretch marks happen on your torso and your thighs regions of your body that you're rarely going to expose to the world. So you don't practically need to be embarrassed about it. 
but more importantly because this is a natural issue it happens to every single human being it's nothing you should be embarrassed about especially if you're someone who's got those stretch marks because of following a fit lifestyle because of losing weight those stretch marks are a symbol of what you've achieved you shouldn't be embarrassed about them you should hold them with pride they are battle scars that's why I highly recommend you go and check out the video interview I did with Mansoor Falla. He's my friend who lost about 70, 75 kgs and look at his opinion on stretch marks. That's how you should look at stretch marks. I highly recommend that you go and watch that particular interview if you're someone who's suffering from stretch marks. Remember, it's an extremely superficial issue and it shouldn't affect your emotional state of mind. Your happiness should be dependent on your self-perception. Your stretch marks don't change the person that you are inside. Love yourself and be proud of who you are. So if you like today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to Be Your Biceps if you want more videos like this. Until next time guys, from Ranveer, we'll see you later.